Do you know how an F1 car is built? How long it takes to build an F1 car and how many people are involved? This is your insider's guide to how an F1 car is made. An F1 car is made up of around an astonishing 14,500 individual components. Teams produce a new one every year, and although each design is unique, it is designed to a set of regulations that define certain dimensions, no-go areas, weight limits, and material specs. To keep costs down, cars must run certain standard and prescribed parts, while transferable parts, which include gearboxes and clutches, can be bought and sold between teams. When do teams start to design their car? The process takes much longer than you might think, and top teams start more than a year before the car is due to be raced. It all begins with the engine and chassis team leaders taking driver feedback on the existing car and working with the concept team to create an initial baseline. That's then evolved over time into a full, detailed design. As plans develop, design personnel are moved from developing the current race car to next season's car, and over winter, parts get made and the car is born. OK, so what about the actual process? It starts with design and development. The design team is split into different groups, including transmission, electronics, mechanical, aerodynamics and composite design. Together, at their peak, they introduce hundreds of 3D CAD models every day. Aerodynamics is key and arguably produces the biggest performance gains, so there's a huge team working on this. So big, it usually has to be split into three to four subgroups with different focus areas. Aero parts are tested virtually with computational fluid dynamics simulations, or CFDs, before the best performing ones are built and sent to the wind tunnel for real-world testing on a 60% scale model. Here, a fan blows high-velocity air over the car with a belt running at matching speed underneath. Sensors record speed, pressure and downforce, and the car is moved around to change ride height and pitch, just as it would on the track. From there, teams move on to manufacturing. Around 80% of the car is made from composites, the mainstay of which is pre-preg carbon fibre. This woven matting of carbon strands and resin comes on giant rolls like a carpet and is stored in freezers to keep it fresh. When parts are built, any impurities could cause catastrophic failure, so the composite areas of an F1 factory are clinical environments with strict controls on air pressure, humidity and temperature, with workers all wearing overalls. Carbon fibre parts begin life with an epoxy resin pattern. This is typically made on 5-axis milling machines that use a CAD drawing to cut to an accuracy of 5 hundredths of a millimetre. Next, the patterns are used to make a female mould using carbon fibre. That mould is then used to make the final part, with the matting precision cut into shape and laid up by hand using a computer-guided laser placement system. The number of layers changes the part's stiffness, so more or less material is used to give the required properties. The direction of the carbon fibre strands determines its strength properties, so parts are laid up with different orientations for each layer to achieve the required properties. In some cases, this effect has been used to literally bend the rules by creating wings that are weaker in certain areas and flex under load. Once the layup is complete, the mould is placed in a vacuum bag and baked in an autoclave. Basically, a large oven. The high temperatures melt the resin and when it cools, it sets to create a solid part. Larger or more complex parts, like the chassis or wing, are often made in two or more sections and glued together. As well as the composite manufacture, of course, there's a huge amount of metal manufacturing required too. Much of this uses aluminium alloys and exotic metals, and some teams have more than 10 machines running at one time to process all these parts. Before we talk about testing and reveal the true cost of an F1 car, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this series, Party Poker, who currently have a special sign-up offer. If you head over to the link in the description, open a new account and deposit £10 or more today, Party Poker will match it on deposits up to £400 and give you £40 worth of free play too. Only available if you are 18 or over, T's and C's apply and please be gamble aware and play responsibly. Back to making an F1 car, teams then move on to parts testing. Remember those 14,500 parts mentioned at the start? Well, all of them have to be inspected and signed off before they make it onto the car itself. 
Coordinate measuring machines and lasers are used to check dimensions to the micron, and materials are put under the microscope, literally, with parts also checked using non-destructive X-ray or ultrasound testing. Dynamic test rigs are used to test sub-assemblies and assemblies, running them at temperatures and motion cycles that match those on the track. Every part is given a life based on mileage or time in use, after which it's removed and replaced. Safety critical components are often tested three or four times their life, just to be sure. The car must also pass a series of FIA crash tests before it's certified. These include front, rear and side impact and rollover tests, and they are extremely destructive. Next, we have the car's first fire-up, shakedown and testing. The first fire-up in the factory is a big moment for the team. At this point, the car is skeletal, with its bodywork still in production, but with the chassis connected to the power unit, fuel system, hydraulics, transmission and cooling system, it can be started up and brought to life. The first car build takes about a week, after which it's either off to a shakedown or the first pre-season test, depending on how smoothly things have gone. The shakedown, which is limited to less than 100 kilometers, is used to make sure everything is bolted together correctly so that pre-season testing time can focus on car setup. From there, pre-season testing arrives and the teams will fine-tune their car and adapt it as they see fit, all to be ready for the first race of the season. So how much does a Formula 1 car cost? F1 has a cost cap these days, so spending is limited at $140 million or £106 million per season in 2022, later dropping to $135 million or £102 million from 2023. That covers all car performance costs, but does not include marketing or the salaries of drivers and the three most expensive team members. The cost of the actual car itself is hard to define because of all the different elements involved and each team varying its design, of course, but it's estimated to be around £6 million. Engines are the most expensive part at an estimated £3.5 million per unit. The chassis costs around £1 million. A gearbox is about £750,000. Front wings are £150,000 each and they need a lot of them. The steering wheel, thanks to its complex electronics, is around £50,000. And although tyres seem a comparative bargain at about £1,500 per set, a team will use 20 sets per car per race, so that's suddenly £60,000 each race weekend. At the end of the day, F1 cars are arguably the most detailed they've ever been and certainly cost a pretty penny, but it's this attention to detail that gives us some of the best F1 racing seen in recent years.